why people commemorate the day of Ashura. Ashura is a breeze that conquers all senses, a magnetic power that drags humanity towards the tragedy which befell the loyal companions and family of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. This tragedy thus results in tears and sorrow for those beheaded on the plains of Karbala. Ashura is commemorated out of love for honor and freedom which Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, died for. He is considered a symbol for his uprising against tyranny, injustice and oppression. It is a lesson for humanity as a whole and revives the sacrifice Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, took to stand up for justice and truth, something which we do not see in history, to the extent and pain Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, had to undertake. Black attire for mourning is worn in the remembrance of this awful tragedy. Contemplation, self-examination and worship all form a part of commemoration where as a result it is hoped to attain a cleansed soul. Processions, marches, self-flagellation and many other rituals are performed on the day of Ashura in accordance to varying cultures but all for the same purpose. A high sense of spirituality is achieved to those sincere in their love for the oppressed Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. The day also serves as an education for small children who are unaware of history. Majalis, or a place of sitting, are held and much approved of by the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. In a narration in Kitab al-Irshad, of Shaykh al-Mufid, we find a narration from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, who asked al-Fudayl, do you people ever organize majalis to recall the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him? Al-Fudayl, with tears pouring down his eyes, replied, Yabn Rasulullah, indeed we do. The Imam, peace be upon him, said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I highly approve of such majalis. It is around this time that minds are most focused on the Imam, peace be upon him. Their actions and speech are often reviewed due to their thoughts on him. This is the best time to remind and awaken minds about the meaning of the revolution of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Its remembrance will never stop. It will continue so long as this world exists, since Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, and his family were not some ordinary human beings, but were the reason for our own existence. Without the family of Muhammad, the religion of Islam as we know it today would most certainly totally corrupted and incomplete. It is the Shia who continue to strive to propagate the truth as taught by the Muhammad and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and the day of Ashura is a day never to be forgotten. The 10th day of Muharram is known as the day of Ashura. On this day, Imam Hussein Hussain, who is the grandson of the Holy Prophet, with his uh, brothers, with his companions, with his cousins, with his sons, with other members of his family and other friends of his who took the journey from Medina, which is in modern-day Saudi Arabia, through to Mecca, all the way towards Kufa, which is in modern-day Iraq. They were stopped at a desert uh, by the uh, governing uh, uh, power at the time, which was the government of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, and they were ordered to either give their allegiance to Yazid, who uh, was someone known to be not Islamic and somebody known to be not qualified to be the ruler of the Muslims, or for Imam Hussein to uh, surrender himself. And the Imam said that I can't do neither of them. I can't surrender because that means you're going to mistreat me and my family and it's not who I am. Nor can I give allegiance to Yazid because somebody like me cannot give allegiance to someone like him. Someone like me who's the grandson of the Holy Prophet, who knows what the rules of Islam are about, who uh, is fit and qualified to lead Muslims, cannot follow somebody who uh, drinks alcohol, who spends his time playing with uh, animals and singing songs, who has no idea how to govern the Muslims. So in this instance, I will not choose either path. Uh, and so on this day, the 10th day, the orders were given to the army that uh, after having stopped Imam Hussein and his family from reaching any water, that on this day, you will fight and kill them. 
And so on the 10th day of Muharram, known as Ashura, the 10th in Arabic, this was the day that Imam Hussein was killed, his family were killed. Uh, it was a very sad um, narration of the events that we hear every year. We see that, uh, for example, his uh, very newly born son, six months old, some of the narrations say, was killed, uh, you know, shot through by an arrow because the Imam wanted to uh, seek water for him. And we see how he gives his farewell to his sons. So this 10th day of, of Muharram, this day of Ashura, is one of uh, extreme tragedy. And it is a day that we uh, use uh, for us to go back and remember the, the family of the Holy Prophet and also to learn why did Imam Hussein do this? So what was the reason that he was willing to sacrifice his life, uh, the life of his family, see the women and children taken as prisoners? What is it that pushed him to this? And so we take the lessons from that and we apply it today in our lives and say that we must be as strong as Imam Hussein was, as brave as he was, as courageous as he was. To never be afraid of speaking out for the truth and to always say that I will act according to what Allah wants, not what the community wants, not what my family and friends want, not what the government wants, not what anybody else wants. I'll do what Allah says for me to do. And Alhamdulillah, I think that is the legacy from Imam Hussein. So this 10th day of Ashura is one that we can learn lessons of about how to be proper, free humans, inshallah. Ashura is one day in the Islamic calendar, the 10th of Muharram. Over 1,000 over 1,000 years ago, Ashura took place. But Ashura lives on. Ashura is present with us in the sense that every year on the 10th of Muharram, we commemorate and remember the martyrdom of the grandson of the Holy Prophet. Now, many people ask, why do we not move on? Sometimes when we have a tragic occasion, a tragic moment in our own family members, some of us may remember them for a few days, a few months, maybe to some extent a few years, and then some move on a little. But when it comes to the grandson of the Holy Prophet, we never move on. Every year, we ensure wherever we are in this world, whether we're in Karbala, beside the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein, or whether we're in any of the Holy Lands, Holy Shrines, or whether we're thousands and thousands of miles away from the Holy Land of Karbala, when it comes to those days, those days of Huzun, those days of tragedy, we ensure that we remember, we reflect, we completely envisage and imagine the situation. People are attached to the day of Ashura, to the month of Al-Muharram, because of the degree of worship that was performed on that day. The moral values that we all uh, accept and dream of as the only solution for us to preserve our humanity are there as abstract ideas unless they are put to practice and unless they see the light in the lives of people, amongst the lives of people in society. People usually do not like to talk about ideas as abstract ideas. They want to see a practical application. Why do people commemorate the day of Ashura? Um, I personally think they commemorate Ashura because if we don't do it for a while every year, some people might forget and we can pass it on to our children. So it will, you know, keep going on for the next generations that are coming up and they will learn more about Ahlul Bayt. Well, there's a hadith from Imam Sadiq السلام, and uh, he was asked this very question and he replied that just as they forgot the day of Ghadir, had we not remembered the tragedy of Imam Hussein every year, it would have been forgotten from amongst the people. So we revive this tragedy every year, learn lessons from it 
and seek to better ourselves and remove injustice from the world. Um, Muharram is a sad month and we come to mosque to remember Imam al-Hussein. Well, we commemorate these ten holy nights to realize what Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam stood for. He stood for peace. Uh, he stood against and fought against oppression. We, we learned his values um, even 1,435 years after his death and we apply them to our daily lives and we just try to learn from him as he learned from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We commemorate Ashura because um, of the sacrifice that Imam Hussein gave to the religion and what it meant. Um, he kept the religion on the right path. Um, he didn't just sacrifice himself for um, Shia or Muslims. He sacrificed himself for humanity. It's just the idea of gathering around, but no, it's not actually that. It's just bigger than that. The image uh, Imam Hussein wanted to show us is that uh, he wanted to remind us. Uh, he wanted to remind us how how Islam, what Islam is, what Islam is about. Uh, to be honest, me personally, what I would like, what I would uh, want to uh, highlight is that what I learned about Islam is what I learned in Muharram. Everything I learned how to pray. I've learned how to fast. I learned how to. I learned everything about my religion in Muharram. We remember that we're not the first people who are mourning Ashura. In fact, our Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam, when Imam al Hussein was born. He himself cuddled and cried and hugged that little baby, that little Imam al Hussein who was in the cradle. And he brought him closer to him and he started to shed tears and cry. And Fatima al Zahra, who had just given birth to Imam al Hussein, said, Abba, Lima Bukaak, O oh, beloved father, O oh, holy messenger, why are you crying and shedding tears? He responds that I shed these tears for what shall occur to this beloved Hussein. He said, Oh Father, what's going to happen? She said, he replies that in a land of Karbala, in that desert plain land, Imam Hussein shall be slaughtered, this beloved Hussein shall be slaughtered, thirsty by the river Furat in the Euphrates. She responds, O oh Father, would you be there to cry for him and remember him and be beside him? She said, no. He replies, No. He said, Would the Father be there, Amir al Mu'mineen? He replies, No. He said, Would I be there? He responds, No. Would Imam Hassan, his beloved brother, be there? He responds, No. Then she says, Oh Father, who would be there? Who would be crying and remembering my beloved son Imam al Hussein? A holy prophet responds, a response which is truly a living reply. A response that we see envisaged in the world today. He responds and says, That, Oh Fatima, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall create Shia, lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, lovers of Imam al Hussein, who shall continuously remember and cry and shed tears for my beloved and your beloved Hussein. So, why do we remember Ashura? The second response is not just we reflect on the tragedy, rather we are performing an Islamic ritual and a sunnah of Rasulullah and we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala in this act of devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this act where we bring ourselves closer to the Ahlul Bayt, closer to Imam al Hussein and those beloved members of the Ahlul Bayt. And thirdly, when we, when we perform the 
majalis and gatherings of Imam al Hussein, we are actually performing a sunnah of all of the Ahlul Bayt and all of the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, those before us, the Imams after Imam al Hussein's tragedy, Imam Zain al Abideen, Imam Muhammad al Baqir, Imam Ja'far al Sadiq who himself would say, Rahimallah man ahya amrana. May Allah bless the one who continues to liven and bring forth the majalis and the remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt. Shi'atuna, our Shi'a, are the ones who yafrahuna li farahina wa yahzanuna li huznina. Our true beloved members are the ones who are happy during the days that the Ahlul Bayt are happy and are sad and in remembrance of the tragedy when the Ahlul Bayt are tragedy. And finally, we remember our Shura as these days, the Imam of our time, Al Hujjat ibn Al Hasan, Imam Sahib Al Asr, the Imam of this time and age, he is remembering the tragedy of his beloved great grandfather Imam Al Hussein, and we pay our tributes and our condolences to him first and foremost. The day of Ashura was a day in the history of humanity on which so many of these moral values, of these noble principles were put to reality. People could see embodiments of justice, of sacrifice, of brotherhood, of loyalty. They could see so many of these beautiful moral values out there in reality demonstrated in front of them. We all know that if these values are not practiced, are not put out there in life and practice, they would simply die and we live today in the West and in even some societies in the East as well in which some of these moral values are not practiced anymore. Hence the result is they die. People stop practicing them, people even stop preaching them. People remember the day of Ashura because of how Imam al Hussein and his noble companions have really demonstrated worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, implementing these noble principles, these moral values amongst themselves, in front of the enemy, to humanity. And when people remember these days, they think, if I want to attach myself to these moral values, if I want to adhere to these principles, I need to be there on that day on which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us that they can be practiced, that they can be put to reality. And no one better than Al Hussein Salamullah and his companions who would do this for us. If we want to follow the truth, if we want to follow Islam, we need to see Islam practiced. And no day like the day of Ashura on which Islam was practiced.